It starts off in 1967 at Eastside High School. Morgan Freeman is the main character. He plays a dude named Joe Clark. He's a teacher and he wearing this Queen Latifah ass old ass outfit. Shit. This lumpy ass afro nigga, roll bounce head ass boy. Is he supposed to be young in this flashback? It's not convincing, bro. The Magna Carta. No, uh, no. He's learning and laughing though with all his beautiful white children and it's a white paradise. His homeboy Benson pulls him out of class to tell him everybody is having a teacher's union meeting or something boring like that. He's real pissed off though cause they didn't invite his dumb ass. Now he's rushing in to go lean on everybody. That's what the movie's about. Morgan Freeman leaning on his co-workers. <laughs> Agreed to accept their condition that you be transferred to school six. Joe! They can go to hell. Come on, Joe! Morgan Freeman leaves or gets fired or something. It's like 20 years later and now the whole school turns into a fucking Batman Arkham Asylum. It's all chaotic and they throw in toilets out the window, harassing fancy white people, selling drugs out the front door, bashing this teacher's head in. Is this all in one day? What the fuck? Who wrote this? I ain't never seen a school this bad. They'd have been shut this bitch down. You a goddamn lie, movie. They went way overboard with this. You exaggerated. <laughs> They lock this fat nigga in a locker for like three days. That's hilarious. That's not funny, I mean. It's just a crazy ass school though. That's what be happening here. It's not cool. The mayor and the school education people having a meeting about how to bring the test scores up at Eastside. Nigga, that's the least of y'all problems, honestly. Bro just got his head smashed in. Shut this shit down. What are you talking about test scores? What in God's name are they doing down there at Eastside? The only person who will take this job is someone with nothing to lose. And then the question becomes, what do we want with him? Oh, wait a minute. No. No. It's the only guy I can think of. They figure there's only one man who can fix this crazy ass school and that's crazy ass Morgan Freeman. He takes the job as principal and he immediately starts talking down to all his co-workers as soon as he meets them. He a good leader. You want to uh, welcome Mr. Clark to Eastside. Uh, Mr. Sorella, for example. You may sit you down, Mr. O'Malley. No one talks in my meetings. No one! You tried it your way for years. And your students can't even get past a minimum basic skills test. That means they can hardly read! There's only one boss in this place, and that's me. The HNIC. The HNIC? The head nigga in charge. They gotta increase the kids' test scores by the end of the year or else the state is gonna take over. Whatever that means. What does that mean? You lose control of the school? You don't have control of the school. What's gonna get worse? I don't understand what that is. Also, Young Candyman is in the movie. As you can see, he's Morgan Freeman's main bodyguard. He barely says anything in the whole damn movie. He don't have to though. He all looking for Candyman, Morgan bitch. Freeman tells the teachers to write down all the names of their bad students. He orders the janitor to paint over the graffiti on the walls too. Well, no shit. Did they need to hire a whole Morgan Freeman to tell you to do that? Why hasn't he done this shit yet? You a janitor, nigga. It's graffiti in this conference room right behind you. No kids even be in here like that, bro. How'd you not at least fix that shit yet? You can't even clean your own damn shirt, dirty ass boy. It's the worst janitor ever. I hate this nigga. You are now the chief custodian, Reverend Slappy. Anyway, they have an assembly now and Morgan Freeman makes all the bad kids go up on the stage. <laughs> These people on the rise is behind me. These people are drug dealers and drug users. Since none of them could graduate anyway, you are all expurgated. Morgan Freeman fucking Thanos snaps half the kids out of the school forever. That's fucked up. They definitely not gonna be shit now. You ain't gonna try to help these niggas at all, bro. They need you the most. He then gives this speech about how it's all the kids' fault that they doing bad in life. These niggas children, bro. I don't 
don't want you to blame your parents. I don't want you to blame the white man. I want you to blame yourselves. They have an emergency PTA meeting after school and all the parents are mad at Morgan Freeman. He tells them all to get off welfare and maybe they can fix their kids. This nigga wildin' bro, whose mask is this? Oh no, get your mask, Benson. Sit down with your kids and make them study at night. Yeah. Don't get your families off yeah. welfare. Damn, you talk to these Give people about Give our children welfare. some pride. And the Lord said, Joe, you know damn good. Ah. Gave my word to go. And that's why I threw those bastards out. Oh, they cheering for this nigga now? They were just booing him. He kicked your kids out of school and then he yelled at you about some welfare. This nigga lame as fuck. Don't clap for this nigga. Who wrote this? Mm. The fat nigga from Juice is in the movie. He's one of the kids that got kicked out of school, but he shows up to beg Morgan Freeman for another chance. He talks all about his drug addiction and his broken home. Then Morgan Freeman says he should kill himself. He a good leader. My father doesn't live with us anymore, sir. Oh, is that what you're doing now? Go around feeling sorry for yourself, boy? Go on, jump. No, I don't wanna kill myself, sir. You smoke crack, don't you? Go on and jump, jump. Look at me, boy. Don't you smoke crack. My. Yes or no? Jump. I'm gonna go back on my own word just this once. Let you back into my school. You mess up just once, and you're out of here. He screams at this little kid, and that cures his crack addiction somehow. He lets him come back to school, but then he just humiliates this nigga every day in front of everybody. How is this helping him, bro? I thought this shit was called Lean On Me. You're supposed to be supportive or something, right? Look at this slovenly, sloppy boy here. Mr. Sams and his friends are going to sing our school song. Father Mr. Darnell, no one is permitted to move during the singing of the song. I was picking up. Report to my child. office. You will sing the school song upon demand, or you will suffer dire consequences. He goes around firing more co-workers and disrespecting them all day long, interrupting their classes. He a good leader. The nigga from Soul Food flips the desk over. He looked like he bought the dog, this nigga. He was bluffing though. He a bitch ass nigga. You should have swung on him, bro. God damn it. You give me the goddamn respect you would damn well want yourself or I will kick your black ass. Fuck you playing with me, bitch. I'm not is this what the real Joe Clark is like? They made this nigga hella unlikable. That's why you only got this one ass homeboy who not even your homeboy. Do you have a wife, nigga? You have some hoes or some family or something somewhere? To be fair, the other characters do address how wild this nigga is. The vice principal even fires back at one point with some pretty solid rose. You're an ego maniacal windbag. Mm. Never made first period for one year straight. I feel like grabbing my books and just draping it. Cause the way I feel I ain't making it. Oh my god. One of his favorite students, Kid Ray, gets beat up real bad by this drug dealer. Getting open hands slapped in the face. Damn, this nigga a student, bro? This nigga like Joe Exotic, old ass nigga. Come on, old man. Fucking playing with me, bitch. I'm not fucking playing with you. every door in this school, chained and locked. All of them. Yes, sir. <laughs> Kid Ray gets his ass whooped so bad that he drops out of school now. I don't think I'm cut out for this, you know, school and all. I just came to say goodbye. Morgan Freeman tells the security to chain up the doors from now on so they can keep all the bad guys out. Everybody says that's a bad idea, but he don't give a fuck. Nobody else's opinion matters but his. He a good leader. What the hell is the fact for? Yeah. They used to call me Crazy Joe, but well, now they can call me Batman. Mm. Go in the house. This episode of Primps Hit Cinema is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. If you're like me, sometimes your brain meat just gets clogged up. You get demotivated or burnt out with work. Talking to a professional can definitely help you put everything in perspective and get your life back on track. 
Right now, my viewers will get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash prim. That's betterhelp.com slash prim. We're all human. We all need somebody to lean on. Lean on betterhelp.com slash prim. Go talk to a therapist. You'll be glad you did. It's good for you. I promise. Thanks, as always, to BetterHelp for sponsoring the video. Now, let's get on with the video. That squirrel voice girl from all the 90s movies is in the movie. She plays one of Morgan Freeman's favorite students named Kanisha. She's real sad because her mom kicked her out for no reason. Why don't you just jump off the roof then? You feeling sorry for yourself? It's your fault or something. I'm a good leader. Where's your mother? She don't want me no more. Mrs. Carter, it's John Levias from Eastside. I'm here with Mr. Clark. When Kanisha was in the fifth grade, you were one of my most active parents. As I get clean, I see myself for who I am. And I don't want her to see me like this no more. If we helped you find a job, a better place to live, would that help? So now that you got off drugs, you don't want to be with your daughter. That makes no sense. Look at this crusty ass, Cloverfield ass apartment. Fucking Chilligan's Island ass apartment. Look at this refrigerator, bro. Who is actually living like this? This shit is haunted. This shit look like Luigi Mansion, Section 8 Mansion. Also, Squirrel Voice Girl All-Star. She All-Star. Morgan Freeman helps the Squirrel Voice Girl and he's making a difference now in the community. He catches the fat nigga skipping class with his friends one day. He makes them all sing the school song and they start singing this sexy ass new R&B version. Who taught you that? Answer me! Mrs. Powers? Yes, sir. Are you the one who changed the school song like that? Mrs. Let her answer! And I certainly never authorized you to change it. Did I? Did I? Take a bow, Mrs. Powers. You've rewritten our alma mater. Yeah! Ha! <laughs> That's what I'm saying. This nigga is really unstable. Why are you screaming in her face if you like the song? Why are you screaming in her face, period? She a grown ass woman. She didn't do anything to you. What's wrong with this nigga? They have this goofy ass 80s montage of everybody holding hands and learning or some shit. This shit looks like a parody. It doesn't even seem real. This looks like a weird ass nightmare I would have. How'd he fix this damn school so fast anyway? He didn't do anything. He was just picking on this one fat nigga the whole time. Come on, bro. Everybody is somebody. He's playing double dutch and all that with the kids. They singing songs about him. Why do they like this nigga all of a sudden? He been screaming at them for months since he got here. Why is he like the cool teacher now? He did not earn his own jump rope song, cuz. That one lady from the PTA meeting goes to see the mayor now. I guess she's the main bad guy and she want to get Morgan Freeman fired. They come up with a plan to catch him with the chains on the doors and then call the fire chief on him. What do you want? Clark! Just like that, huh? Head on a platter. All right, I'll sick the fire chief on Clark. Will that satisfy you? Yes. And then I'll get the school board to dismiss him. It's the day of the test and Morgan Freeman calls an assembly to raise everybody's spirits. He does a good job. He a good leader. You are just a bunch of niggas and spicks and poor white trash. They sing Lean On Me and they all got the school spirit now. That's not gonna help you take a test, but all right. They take the big test and afterward, Morgan Freeman goes to the auditorium. Squirrel Voice Girl is here. She's sad again cause she pregnant. She found out she was pregnant. This bitch got hella storylines. Damn, bro. He only care about these two students. Can we see some other students in this bitch, please? I never meant for this to happen. Well, you girls never do. All right, I'm gonna help you. Eight o'clock in the morning. I'll call your mother myself. What is it, Mr. Wright? The fire chief. Where is it? We got past the gate. The enemy is here. It's all got to lock this Cuff him. 
Morgan Freeman gets arrested and he probably gonna get fired now. It's a happy ending. This nigga deserve it, 100%. All these stupid ass little kids get together though and try to get him out. They love him so much? Hell no, what the hell are y'all doing? How did y'all organize this? Why don't y'all go to prom or something? Y'all niggas ain't have no type of events this whole movie. All y'all care about is Joe goddamn Clark. If I saw my principal getting arrested, that shit would be hilarious. I'm not marching nowhere. He was suspending niggas for not singing a song right. He would not have this kind of turnout. He would have a few Steve Urkel ass niggas maybe and Squirrel Voice Girl. And this nigga. He would definitely be here. This nigga weird. The thing that you don't understand is that Mr. Clark believes in us. He provided an environment. He doesn't believe in you because you don't take care of your responsibility. <laughs> He's the only father that some of us who do have fathers know. You don't know a thing about Mr. Clark. He will give you what Eastside High deserves. A good principal. We don't want a good principal. We want Mr. Clark. The question is what is best for you? Lady, where is your kid? Who is your kid? I haven't seen this nigga one time. Are you even a parent, bitch? Morgan Freeman tells all the kids to go home so they don't get hurt. Just then, the vice principal pulls up and gives them the results of the test. How the fuck they get the results back already in the same day? They literally just took the test. Gotta read this. Is this what you call taking care of our responsibility? Joe Clark, read this. The students of Eastside High have passed the minimum basic skill test. Everybody happy now. They passed the standardized state test. That means they smart and they're gonna succeed now. Of course they passed the test. You kicked out half the students and didn't help them. Of course your numbers improved. Are you serious, bro? I didn't like this movie. It left a pretty bad taste in my mouth. This writer 100% didn't know what he was talking about. He just took the base of the story and was doing anything, it looks like. You know they changed the real story around so much to fit their weird ass narrative or whatever they were doing. Like apparently he didn't even start teaching at Eastside until 1972 and most of his students were black. So they just completely made up this white paradise in the beginning of the movie. He also didn't get arrested for the chains on the doors. They just made that part up and entirely. That's the climax of the movie, nigga. That's crazy, right? Also, he got fired from the school like a year after the movie came out. The state took control over the school anyway. Apparently, the scores didn't increase enough. So in the end, he didn't do shit but clean up the walls and kick out all these students. Why'd they even make a movie about this? It's not an inspirational story. Overall, they made this movie for people who are scared of black teenagers. Morgan Freeman comes in hitting him with a baseball bat and you're supposed to be cheering and like, yeah, you go, Mr. Clark. So if you're scared of black teenagers, this will be your movie. I think it could have worked, honestly, if they just toned it down and made it more realistic. But this was made in the 80s. Realistic movies weren't a thing yet. The acting is pretty good, though. I agree with some of the messages, but... Nobody is ever supposed to conduct themselves like this in a professional setting. Don't be like him, please. That's it though. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking the video. Thanks for watching every other video. Follow me on Twitch. We'll be having a good time. We'll be watching Flavor of Love. It's a bad time. Join me in the next episode for more of your favorite hood movies written by white people. I love you, no pause. The movie over. I mean, the video. <laughs> Don't. You know damn well.